Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey. Where is everybody else? Mm -hmm. James, you want to go over that announcement?
but your assignment might change because of what? If uh, somebody don't show up. Yeah. Somebody goes home sick, or short, or walk out. So there's that, and that happens too. So, yeah, that, so it might change. You're gonna have to be flexible. That's what we do, that's what we signed up for. Um, but get your assignment, understand that our desire is to keep consistent <coughs> assignments, except for the position of float. Why is there a float position? You know, Mary, you want an off day? Sometimes you want an off day. Sometimes I want an off day. I tried. I couldn't get it today. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we can't get them and you're willing to, uh, and you're not willing to come in, then you'll have an off day. And that's why we have floats. And some people have to float. And it usually is the new kid on the block that floats. Until, you know, until there's another new kid on the block, right? So that's usually how it goes. Um, we try to do what's right by everybody. We do. But sometimes there will be reasons, too, strategically. When we went 12-hour shifts, the nurses, we had to strategic, strategically sit down. Don, Tina, James, and myself sat down and talked about which nurse was the best fit. Even when we have nurses that haven't arrived yet by virtue of being RNs or whatever, we know where we want to place them based on the, you know, the of the resident. So we do make those decisions sometimes and bear with us during those times. It's not a personal, it, you know, it's not personal. It really is. It's based on what we've seen, you know, maybe the maturity of the individual or the ability of the individual or the credentials or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we try to make the best decisions. Sometimes we'll miss a piece. So you can come to us, you can always come to us and ask, hey, what, would you look at this? Will you relook at it and stuff? And then we'll be glad to talk to you. Um, round on your residence. How often do you round? Every two hours. Sometimes you have to do it every hour. It all depends on the person that you got. That's right. That's right. Because in the cubby, you have to do a few of them every hour. What do you look for when you round? Well, you make sure the call lines are in place, make sure they're safe. Make sure the area is safe, make sure they are dry and clean, and make sure they are okay. Make sure alarms are set and everything else. If you see somebody, maybe with some dementia, mm -hmm. and they are just fiddling, fiddling, fiddling. You talk to them, they notice you, but then they're just fiddling with stuff. Have you ever seen people like that? Mm -hmm. Just, just kind of, what do you, what does that make you think? When you walk out that room, what do you think? Uh, not very safe place to leave us. If you see there's a change in condition, that person was talking to you like Freud yesterday, and today they're just not right. What do you do about that? Go to a nurse and then tell them that something's right. Yeah, yeah. Because they're prime for falls, right? Now we have a stop and watch form. A lot of the changes that have occurred are not just changes, you know, that I sit up nights thinking of. They're not just changes from my past life. They're changes because the CMS, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, have decided their best practices. And then they generate it. Then they put it out in the, in the world, in the cyber world. And we've got, it's up to us to find it on their website, print that stuff off, teach you, and make it happen. That's the expectation. They've been doing this for some time. So I happen to know about it because I was with a company that had people that pretty much just sat and read that stuff all day long. In all fairness to this building, the previous administration that I replaced, oh, okay, we'll talk about that. The previous administration that I replaced, she didn't have the ability to know all these things unless she was able to uncover it. So I don't want to ever trash anybody that was here before. I don't believe in that. I don't even know the person. I don't believe that. But I will tell you this, my goal here is to do the best job I can. So I know that these things have to happen. So I say all that because we have a stop and watch form that CMS has asked for, asked for us to do. And that form will be in some color paper. Debbie's printing it off today. And it's at the nurses' stations. And anytime you see something, you put it on that stop and watch form and you put it on your the where your nurse hangs out, the cart, med cart. And then the, the nurse should follow up and decide if there's something going on or not. 
Have you ever seen somebody that just didn't seem right? Your spidey sense says, you're just not right. Mm -hmm. And you told your nerve. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had that? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. All right, put it right. Put it on your stop and watch forms. Then you have a paper trail. You have, you can always make a copy for yourself if you want to. But the one thing you do want to do is make sure that paper is in front of that nurse. Because they might get busy, they might not take it seriously, they might, who knows. We put it in writing on that side of the watch. The nurse then, and it's their responsibility, take that form and say, hmm, let me go check this out. And then follow up, maybe tell their supervisor, maybe call the doctor, maybe call the family, maybe not. But they have to follow up and write a note about it. Now we've noticed that so many times when we've had falls, I mean, did you guys notice how many falls we've had here? It's ridiculous, you know? And I'm like, gosh, there's such a strong, competent, smart group of people. And I'm not blowing smoke. I really believe that about the nurses and about the nursing assistants. I'm hugely impressed. There's only a few of you. And when I came here, there weren't too many of you. But you were so good. And I'm like, well, why, why do we have skin problems? Why do we have falls? What the heck? Well, part of it is that we didn't have enough staff. Part of it is we have a group of really elderly people, and they get sick, and we know they're sick, and we need to, once we know they're sick, to keep a closer eye during that time. We need to say it out loud, because we kind of know it, we kind of feel it, but we don't, we just don't do it, or they wouldn't be falling as much as they do. So we talk in the meeting, somebody's sick because we thought their urine looked crappy, or somebody's sick because they seemed a little delusional. And by golly, next day I come in and they fall. So what do you have done? To oh, well, so what we're gonna try to do is, based off of your stopping watches, or based off the labs, and we know somebody's a little ill, and you all might not always know it, right? And you all always know that something's going on. You know how you have the blue dots um, next to the patients? What do those blue dots mean? Oh, all right. All right. So what you're also, if you see somebody with, it may be a couple of these stars, so it's visible, but if you see a star, that's a person we think something's going on, but we don't really know what it is, but we want to alert you all, because you're the first, you're our eyes, you all see everything, that you know that we're watching them for something. So if you see something unusual, make sure you let the nurse know. But the star by their name lets you know something's not quite right, and they're trying to watch that person. Prime example, um, can't give names through HIPAA, but you alerted me to somebody a week and a half ago. So we started watching her, and sure enough, you know, we w we couldn't prevent what was wrong with her, but we were aware of it, and we were all watching her because Maleha noticed it and brought it to our attention one day in the dining room that she just wasn't swallowing right and she wasn't processing right, and sure enough, I mean, you know, she's she's had a CVA. So we couldn't have prevented it, but we watched it. So what we'll do from now on, if you all alert us to something, we'll put a star by their name. So coming in and out by the door, if you see a star by somebody's name, you know something's not quite right, and we're not sure what it is, but we need everybody's eyes on them. One, they might be more of a potential <coughs> fall, but two, something's going on, and you all might notice it because you're in and out with these people. So we just want to let you know, if you start seeing the stars by people's names, that's what it is. Now, if it's fixed and we found out it was a UTI and they've been put on antibiotic and they're better, we're going to remove that star. So the stars won't stay forever. If we like fix what the issue is, we'll take it off. Huh? I you guys forgot to remove the star. Well, hopefully we won't. But in your huddles that are going to be happening, put two on him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> put the whole one on him. But um, in your huddles, if you notice somebody's star has been on there for two weeks, that's when you say in the huddle to your nurse and your supervisor who's there, hey, Betty Lou still has a star. Are they still sick? Are we still watching them? So that's a check and balance for everybody, okay? Because we, we're, we're human. We might forget. What do you see in the stars? By the door or by the door? By their name. You know where their name is on the door, like where the blue dots are? So some people might have a blue dot and a star. Some people may just have a star, okay? So that's something we're starting up. How long the blue dots supposed to be on the door? 90 days. If they go 90 days without a fall. That's it. Unless we've 
caught, we, we've prevented them from falling, but we know there's still a risk, then it potentially can stay up. A good example of what we're talking about, what we saw was a lady who fell, and we didn't think she, the first floor, MDU lady, she fell, it's been some time ago, and she ended up having a fracture, we didn't think that happened originally, but the day before and the day before that, we were like, she has some us a couple of respiratory things. She's just not quite right. We weren't sure. We weren't sure it was pneumonia, maybe a cold, but we kind of thought pneumonia. I don't know. We talked about it. We threw it around a little bit, and then she took a shower, and she was in the shower with one caregiver, and she just wasn't well, and she fell. And then the area wasn't displaced or anything, um, but it wasn't. So the assessment was done, but there was no. There didn't seem to be a problem. And the end of the next day, she had a fracture. She actually did have a fracture, but it wasn't until she worried it that it displaced and became obvious to us. But my point is, see how that goes? If we had been aware that she wasn't quite right, if she had her stars, potentially there would have been two ways. But that's the time you decide on two ways as opposed to one. If it says one or two on the care guides, who uses the care guides? Does anybody in here use those? Sometimes they're not right. I'm sure what do you do if you think something's not right? right? They're not right. Ask the bottom and tell the nurse that way they can change it. And this, let me put this in your ear too. Yeah. Just because Debbie's the one that does it. Give us your information, but what we find too is they might not be right for your shift, mm -hmm. but come another, another, another shift, it might be right. Some people on some day shift, sundown, we don't have to do much, but if you talk to a second shift, come four o'clock or five o'clock, that's a different bird. Mm -hmm. So. Just because it's not right might not mean it's just because you think it's not right. Maybe we need to put in there during these hours they're like this, but during these hours they're like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let us yeah, know. Yeah. Is there something else in there? You don't think what? I'm sorry. I, I don't think that I agree. Uh, for me personally, mm -hmm. I don't think we should put on there that it's like that during this shift or like that during a second shift or third shift. Okay. And the only reason I say that. As I know, a lot of aides, me included sometimes, go look down to see that note and they're in a hurry to okay, copy exactly what's down there. I'm sure everybody's done that. I'm sure. And if you've got certain things, I mean, you know, I don't think we'll be really putting in there what is a reality, and we'll be putting in there what is already there. Well, I say that is because I know we have one patient here <clears throat> who, during day shift, they can pretty much stand and walk with little help, but after they've been up for a few hours, it takes two people or a lawyer to get them back in bed. So how they are in the morning, they don't present like that all day long. So people need to know that, because if you're a floater, or you come from one shift to the other, you kind of need to know that. So we probably need to get used to charting what we see. You know, because just because it says they're like this one day and they weren't like that for you, you need to put in how they were for you. Because that can alert us and MBS is that, hey, something's going on with this person. They're having more days and they're like this now versus what we normally see them at. So I hear what you're saying. Chart what you see. But our information cards really do need to let them know how they are on day shift and how they are at night if they're a sundowner. But chart what you see because maybe Instead of them going, getting a little woo by four, we start to see that they're getting like that at two. Well, then we have to change how we care for that person. We have a gentleman on the second floor that um, gets a little aggressive in the afternoon. And, oh, you're saying he does? <laughs> Dennis does? <laughs> Maybe. But this is a bit easier. And his wife said he sat down early. So we did an intervention because he had, he was a one-on-one -on -one with somebody, who, you know, he was confused. He was just confused. He didn't mean any harm, but we we're trying to problem solve that. So we put an intervention in place. And that intervention is after, after lunch, he lays down because he was tired. In the morning, he seems pretty good. After lunch, he eats, he's tired, and he's crotchety, and he's confused. And so the, the plan is to lay him down. How would you know that? I think it would be on the care guide because we decided that in our meeting, we came up with that plan, we put it in the care guide. So it prevents him from potentially being in an altercation, a resident to resident, have to report to state, somebody getting hurt. 
I mean, it's really cute. You guys are key to the care of people. Sometimes I think we get in uh, a rut and we don't, we think we know everything that's going on, but they change, things change from day to day. So the care guides are really imperative. Now I know you guys have been working short. I know you haven't had what we would like to schedule you. Not called short, it's called challenging. <laughs> you it You're absolutely right, forgive me. Yeah, it is a to short. short to nobody. But you know what? Mm -hmm. In order to cover for our challenging mm -hmm. moments, we uh, we bring in people into overtime who are tired. So they're tired. They're grouchy. We're, we're working the crap out of people. And we would like to staff with more. We want more. Yes. You know? We really do. I we're trying. What did you say? I got a question. How about if you have, um, uh, I am not saying, you know, to isolate that or what do you do with the residents? It's contact because anybody can Even have an RSA. That's for you. It's contact. It's okay. Contact. Unless they I mean, walk this around with you. Somebody goes to the bathroom by herself, by herself sometimes. <laughs> It's never good when they pee on people, is it? If they, if they are not able to contain their urine, then it becomes a problem. But if they are able to contain their urine, then it's merely contact. If it's respiratory, that's another animal. We totally have to isolate them. You know, the studies show that most of us who have worked in healthcare any amount of time carry MRSA <laughs> already. So out of this group, probably 80% would test positive for MRSA in their nearies. Um, that's why when you have MRSA show in your urine or whatever, the doctor will give you the uh, bacitracin to squirt your nose over a period of time to try to get control of it. I say that to say it's everywhere, but we don't want it to be worse, you know. So we do standard precautions that we've been doing for years, and if we know about it, we do contact precautions. So we do need to be careful. Well, we can't be an alarmist, you know. And let me ask this. I didn't ask this in the earlier <coughs> group, but I've been told that if we have somebody that's hospice, that <coughs> this group doesn't do anything for them. No. 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 They still no. go in there no. and no. take care of them. You still have to take care of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, have to turn on. I just knew it couldn't be true. No, we go in no. and take no. care of them, and we chart on them. And you give them their showers. Yes, they do. Normal. You give them their bed back. Yeah. You give them moral care. Yes. Well, all those, yeah. You believe in yourselves. Good. Somebody's lying on the couch. Yeah. Well, they need to put that They need to put that on. With their houses, we don't care. And even if you have the houses, you need help holding them up or anything like that when they're in there. Good. We always ask them. What hospice do, does is over and above what the expectation is for you guys, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, they really shouldn't uh, schedule the hospice on their shower day. There's that, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They should put them right a couple days before their shower day, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if their shower day, then the residents here get the showers again. You know, sometimes hospice schedule the same shower day, you, you don't get to shower. We need to figure out how to fix that. No. Well, some of the hospitals that come in, they like to give them their showers, too. Well, they can, too. But then they get more than they need. Or not more than they need. They get more. Mm -hmm. They need the more care. I just let them know what days I was coming, and then they schedule the days. Then they modify They schedule around the days I was coming. They go ahead and go to work. They go to The charge nurses or the unit managers really need organize that. So that's a good point though. We just need to make it happen. And hospice is so it's it's such a great opportunity for additional things. You know, reading to them, doing their nails or whatever. That is a beautiful opportunity. When you have family that's grieving, it's a wonderful time to get people in. Social services, clergy, it's a great time for that. To get people in to support the family because it is a family problem. It's not just a resident. Sometimes it's more. My sense would be terrible. I'm dying to be arguing. I'd be like, I'm like, I can just see it now. Because they're going to be, one will be wanting to pull the plug, the other one will never let me go. I could be just a fellow there. 
So, you know, I understand that's the kind of thing that we need. We're professionals, we're caregivers, we need to step in to help them during that time. Have you ever had a grieving family here that you felt like you wanted to do something for them? I have too. If, if you want to get them a pop or get them some yeah, coffee. Yeah, the coffee or to over a, a some Danish, some Danish like a car, yeah, like a little cookies, whatever That's it is. We do. That's wonderful. And it's so appreciated because they're not thinking about taking care of themselves or too busy grieving. That's a beautiful thing. We talked a little bit about oral care. If you have somebody with a tube feeding, they still get them out there. They do. And, and that's they get most, more frequently. Yes. Because they're not eating, so they're not lactate or lactating. Oh, no, no, they're probably not that eating. Well, you see, you Mouth is dry. What's it called? Salivating. 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 But not lactate. So they're, um, you got to do it more often, like every four hours. And, you know, you guys get a, a raw deal with your reputation with that. Because I'm hearing that you're not doing it. So, you know, be focused on that. How about their nails? What's going on with their nails? Clean. 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 It's your responsibility to make it happen. If somebody else does it, it's helpful. But it's your responsibility to make sure it's happening. So you might want to look at your nails and see what's happening, especially on shower day. When you're getting ready to do a shower, who do you tell? Tell the nurse when you're going to do a shower. Right. Because she's going to know where you are. She'll want to know where you are. She's going to look at their skin. Right? So we want to make sure we know what's going on with skin. And interruption in skin integrity is, um, is very hard on our residents. They're sick. In many cases, they're elderly. In other cases, or both. They're, to have an interruption in their skin really throws them off. Well, one so, of our residents yeah. charged you to go in there and see. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> well, um, we'll pay it. He calls it the car wash. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So make sure you do that. Make sure that you document. Now, I've heard from our consultants that we're not documenting showers. Do you feel like the showers are being given? I give yes. my showers, but I will not document on a shower that is in my group and somebody else has gone. I will not document unless they come to me and take care of the showers. You should be shower documenting on the ones you gave. Yeah. I give the ones that I do. Because now you have to do the skin thing on there too. Okay. And that's what you should do. But you feel like pretty well the showers are being given. Yes. Okay. Sometimes they're they're you go to the other side. Just yeah. To get a yeah, we we've talked about that. We know we have a challenge there. But I'll tell you what, the more staff we get in here, the less that'll be a problem. Mm. We're getting them in here, we're interviewing. Yeah, yeah. Don has taken this on as a freaking project. We're getting them in here, we're interviewing, we're getting them in as soon as possible. We have eight nurses. We had eight today. people orientate yesterday and four yes. nurses and four are aides. And actually two of the aides were on the floor this morning. And they were happy. They were happy. Some people are treating them well. Mm -hmm. You gotta raise them up, you gotta teach yeah. them, you gotta yeah. guide them yeah. and screw yeah. up. <laughs> and you're doing the orientation. So I think you yeah, know pretty nice. You yeah. know, we don't Sometimes most people are. I mean, we try. I know. We don't want to run them off board. We need help. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you got to treat them right. It takes a while to get to know, you know, what you're doing. It takes a while to get to know you guys. You guys love you. Worked here a long time. You're a little clicky, I have to say. It's not that you're mean, but you are a little clicky. So you know, embrace them. Bring them into your to the fold. Make them a part of what we're doing here, so they'll stay. Um, we're trying very hard to only hire people that we feel like we're doing a good job. You know, we're being selective, aren't we, Don? Do you? So, and then James is on the end of teaching them and guiding them and watching over them and answering those questions. And if you have a concern, you can go to James and say, hey, this person is a little extra healthier there. 
The uh, benchmarks, I'm going to talk in a minute about benchmarks. We're going to talk about mill time too. But the benchmarks are um, the MDS assessments. You've heard of MDSs, right? That MDS assessment takes all the information that, um, that MDS nurses collect about the resident. And they put it in the right pews and send it to the government so they know how to pay us. It's a way that they know the acuity of the resident. That's why it's really important that you're careful with how you document ADLs. You know, if you are doing extensive care, if you're doing any kind of care where your hand is like this, that's extensive. You may think it's a total, a total. Uh -uh. It's extensive if you have to raise them up, if you have to push them over. If you are, have your hands up, that's extensive assessment. If your hands are down and you're pulling them, and you're, that's, what is the next one? Limited. Limited assessment. Make sure you do that correctly. We need to let people know that looks at, look at us are acuity levels. But like I said, like he was saying too, like some days they're extensive. The next day you're doing a total care on that person. Yeah, and just, the next day you're doing extensive And that's okay. Care. You that's just document what okay. you do. Because so that's we get what I paid write, like this. for the most, we get paid for the most care that somebody requires, okay. and it just depends where they fall at on their, we call it the ARD date. So and within that date, that. within that seven days we're looking at, if three of those days they required extensive, but four days they were supervision, they need to know that because we get paid off of those three days that they required extensive. Because see, some of my people are, you know, extensive, and the next day they can be, and that's know, okay. It just changes. That's okay. And that's a lot nice. of times we care plan people mm -hmm. that, that they right. fluctuate. Okay. So it's okay that they be honest because that also might show us that, hey, this person's getting a little sicker and maybe we need to do this, this, this instead. So yeah, chart might, exactly they what they require. That day and then they, you know, you have to do everything for them the next day you don't have to. Right. And, 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 go ahead. and if they're, you know, I know Sean has a place where you can document that kind of stuff. It's okay to type in. Resident very weak today, or resident sick today, or re you know, feel free to type that in there narratively if there's something going on. And okay. that's really a meal to me, I'm sorry. Thank I you. change breakfast and lunch is not the same mm -hmm. because if people need more help with something, so yeah. Yep. If that affects the building, it affects all of us, but it affects you from the standpoint that acuity determines, um, well, it hasn't up to this point, but acuity will determine. Your staffing levels. If you have a hall that all has, um, if you have a hall that all has what they call PA ones, that means they're pretty independent. They're the lowest pay that we get. They're the simplest resident, and they're PA ones, and they don't require any, any care. So if in your documentation you're saying your whole hall, you're not doing much for them, they're coming out of PA ones, then we're gonna, we're not going to need so much staff for that hall. It only makes sense. But if you're documenting the full extent of what you're doing and there are completes, then it's going to be demonstrated that you need more staff. That's coming down the pipe. We haven't been there because we haven't had enough staff to do that. That's coming. And that's how we do it. So not only is it good for the company, it's good for the home. It's good to make money. Because that's how we get careers, that's how we get raises, that's how we don't look all you know, banged up. Because we have enough money, it keeps us fluid. It's like you at home. The more money you make, the better things go on. More money we make, the better things go here. But from a personal standpoint, you want your residents to demonstrate they need that care. So having said that, MDSs determine benchmarks. Benchmarks tell us what we're doing is falls, what we're doing with uh, skin uh, infections, those darn pesky UTIs, all that, all that kind of, there's a lot of criteria, UT or um, something like that. So benchmarks are real important. Those benchmarks go to state, bounce off state, and come back to us. So when the State Board of Health comes in, they will look at our benchmarks and that tells them, it's like an A1C does blood sugar. It tells them what we've been doing over the last quarter. If we have a whole bunch of UTIs on our benchmarks, that means we got a problem. We're not hydrating, we're not doing good peri care. I mean, you're gonna have a few UTIs in the elder room. So we're tracking that, we're looking at regions, making sure that, I'm telling you, if we saw that one region, one little area had four or five UTIs, we're going to go. 
but that's a caregiver issue. Either they're not washing their hands or they don't know how to do hair care. And actually, James has put it on his list to do to do some hair care in services and return demonstration because we're going to make sure that everybody is well versed in that. Men, who wants to do hair care on a man, for God's sake? But you got to, you know? And um, because they get UTIs too, and then we have behaviors, they're sick, um, falls, all kinds of things happen. And it's kind of hard, you know? Now the doctors don't really want to treat UTIs because it's been over treated in the past. And so now we've got these mega, uh, we've got these bacteria that it's hard to kill, so, you know, MRSA and that sort of thing, because we've over-treated UTIs in the past. It's really, the onus is on you guys to make sure that they're clean and hydrated and protected from bacteria in their urine. There shouldn't be any bacteria in their urine. Urine is sterile, you know. So if they have bacteria in there, there's some reason. It could be, sometimes little women, their, their anatomy changes, they, they'll get bacteria in there sometimes. But that's not our big problem. It's more of a functional problem. It's more, it's more maybe, I don't know what it is, maybe it was that, that staffing was meant to be creative, meant opportunities to grow. I don't know what it was, but I know from going forward, we're really going to have to look at that. I know that we had a lot of skin breakdown. And that probably is related to, I remember when I came up and I first met Dennis, and uh, John, and when I went up there, I was like, so why would we have skin breakdown? And then it's like, I don't know, but I've got like 25 patients with it. So that was really clear to me then. We need more staff. That's, you can only do what you can do, right? So staff, staff, staff. We're really, really working on it. But understand this, skin breakdown is what they call a signal event. And in-house skin breakdown is not acceptable. If you anticipate somebody's going to have skin breakdown, let somebody know. If you see a fire in the corner, you won't go home. You put that fire out or tell somebody else to. If you see somebody that's getting ready to break down, tell somebody. That's a fire in the corner. Okay? I'm, I'm dependent on you to do that. The other thing is the darn falls. I talked to an A about something. It was on the other end of uh, second floor. And she was telling me when I come in in the morning, I know so-and-so is going to call. I know it. So that's where I go first. And then she told me the whole plan. It was a plan she devised. It's not on the care plan. It was just her plan to keep that person safe. And they hadn't fallen since I've been here. She, she was protecting them. She was making sure that person was safe. I bet any one of you could tell me a story like that. Because I think you're just that good. So please keep that in mind. Let's watch our stars. Let's make sure we... You know, if the spidey sense goes off and you know that um, that there is a potential fall, do something about it, do your stop and watch, I don't know, your teammate on that, that <coughs> room, talk to them, but do something to prevent that fall. So that our benchmarks that are really high, or they're going down, skin went from two pages to a half page. So our benchmarks are getting better. But we're sending this crap to state. It's like we're sending this report card with some C's and D's on it when we're really an A facility. So we've got to really tie, tidy this up. And you'll hear more about it. You're going to have to do return demonstrations on care care and stuff. Well, show them what you got. You know, you don't have to keep doing it if you know what you're doing. So um, I want to talk about that. I also want to talk about meal time. Did you guys want to, I'm boring. So did you guys want to talk about meal time? Hi, James. Don. Yes, ma'am. Right here. In the evening times, <coughs> they have me in the dining room. I think there should be another person in there with me. At one point, you said that that was right, mm -hmm. that you was going to have somebody in there with me. It never happened. <coughs> I'm in there and it's hard for me to get keep everybody in there and then take everybody out. And you can use the collect everything. I agree. You can use the support. So you're going to be there tonight. Is it assigned? That's just for tonight, though. I'm talking about every evening. <laughs> so we moved past tonight, and he said it's assigned. So it is on the assignment sheet? Yeah, it is. On the board. On the board. I'm thinking, so, too, though, we talked about staffing. And as our staffing gets better, we have a plan on how we want to staff first floor. And so I think that will pick up that issue. 
Or are they going to rotate it or something? Because as of right now, it's just me every evening. And it's three people down there right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we want to try. We talked about that. Potentially trying to stay three people, it does make it hard. One person's way on that end. You're on this end, and that person, in the, you're in the middle curve today, aren't you, David? No, I'm not, not on the floor at all. all. You're not on the floor at all, so that's what I'm talking about. Tina called Tina that told her I was available. She scheduled me, but didn't put me on the board, and I came in, and she said, tell Lorraine that we put you in the dining hall. Okay. And I said, okay. So we are aware of that. We have been trying to talk through some, trying to figure out how to. But you know what this problem, I'm sorry, this problem when I'm down in here, that is not, if she's off. Right because you're by yourself. Well, right now, you it's it, your people kids. need like help. You can't sit and feel mm -hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. They need to, almost everybody need help to have food and understand mm -hmm. People is old, they don't have really strength. You, you know need to go out. You need to see if somebody don't eat. You need to offer some. Somebody want to go to bed. Somebody is feeling they want to go right away back. You can't leave dining room alone. People is eating. This is problem. It's not a hard. I mean, only your hand is tight. You can't right. please people. This is only. And you say, I need to go to the bathroom. And everybody is watching you, what you are going to do. Because people in first school is there. I mean, hey, she needs to. You need two in there. We do have two in there. There's a lot of, there are a lot of people. So the total number of residents on the first floor is what? 45, 50? Some total. And at meal, there's one meal, right? Correct. Right. So how many, would you estimate how many residents are in there? There's a large child. It's probably a good 30. 30. 30. The majority so of our floor goes, except for some of the MDU people. You know, what's so the that means 15 yeah. on the floor. <laughs> What's and you have to walk with something. And you do have a couple that come down from upstairs. Yeah, yeah. 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 So what's more problematic than that yeah. is second hey. floor feeding. Second yeah. floor is a nightmare on feeding. I, I, I work there occasionally up on second. Mm -hmm. And first floor, second feeding doesn't matter. It is a nightmare when you're assigned a hall. You're still responsible for getting, especially when you first feed, you're responsible for getting your people to that dining hall that you're assigned to, yet the same token, you're supposed to be in the dining hall setting tables up, and then when you're through, you can't really leave until everybody's gone, because you're responsible for getting these people out of the dining hall and back to the room, so which is virtually an impossibility. That's a second I'm talking about second and third. Yeah, you know, I mean, well, it's second shift. Second. Second well, cover first and second feet. Yeah, you know. oh, okay. I've worked up there in the morning to the same thing. That's a nightmare. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I usually, well, I mean, I do have a lot of get frustrated. But I get really frustrated when I'm working upstairs, and there's absolutely nobody assigned to the, you know, as a feeder, because we got rid of all the feeders, yet we're carrying more hats at the same time. I think day shift is better, wouldn't you say? Would anyone want to comment on day shift? It's better than it was. It is better than what it was, but we have some people, like I know the restorative has their table. But they just want to take care of their table. One person is help. one person is responsible to take care of that table because right. we're not, we're they have uh, verbal and physical prompting and things that they need to do. Now they can help set up people before their people get there, but they are charting a certain way based off of yes, they're doing hand on hand. Yes, if it was that hand. way, I would have been in the dining room by myself the other day because it was just me and uh, Dwayne. And did he help you? Yes, he did. Okay. That's what I'm saying. They're supposed to be helping you. But once their table people are there, they have to adhere to those people and provide them with their verbal feeds and not just ones. Like sometimes the aides don't come in. Sometimes they do. Then like my thing is if I say something to them, like, you know, you're supposed to be in here. Uh, can't you just wipe the table off like in between the feeding? And the aides on day shift are assigned because I want to. I kind of want to divide this because yeah. we have two different yeah, animals here. But my uh, shift is totally on. I know it's, it's like a zoo, and in the day we got them caged. And the day is kind of. us what's your point? In my the is, I men don't have to throw the difference. See, I put Donna on a dining. Mm -hmm. I go by myself doing the hallway. Mm -hmm. That's about 20 cart, 20 trays. Yeah, I'm by myself. You have to split it up. Okay. I, I mean, come on now. 20 carts. I mean, 20 trays in there. I could see you delivering 20 without too big an issue. It's if you
you have to feed somebody, which the feed really shouldn't be in the rooms because how you, you don't have a feed on, on except uh, in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. If they come in and and help, and they have been, and it's getting better. But like on day, like the weekends are terrible. Uh, it's about it's about it's not about like it is a problem and we need to every time that we have one of our challenging days we need to look at that and how to fix that it's be like four aides to the house and they really can't afford to come in right so I mean you see what I'm yeah, when, that's, when we're down, staff, yeah, we're like, it, it well, makes it even that much harder to do about then, like, uh, yeah. But I think it's not as bad as numbers. even, though. It's, and not in my evening shift, it's a lot better in the morning. And why is the evening shift worse? It's because that's yeah. the least oh, staffed right. no, no, shift. Right. So we have been really pushing evening mm -hmm. shift, and we even went, I don't even, I don't really like 12 hours for AIDS, I think it's really hard. But we, but some want to do it, so we said, sure. At least then they're here through the right. So we're really, really working on that. getting better. Getting people in here. In the meantime, if we do have those days where we don't have people, then we've got to figure out at least to get people to stay over. Now I will say this: Did you guys have you noticed an attendance issue in this home? And it's the same one. Too. So we are holding people accountable. We are watching that. It's just kind of the same ones that makes all those guys think straight. And that even makes the, you know, we do need to hire, but when people should call off, then that it's very difficult. So understand this, that people are being held accountable. Not one, not two, not the, not the ones who don't do a good job, not the ones who do do a good job. Everybody across the board, attendance is being looked at. I really don't know anybody that went out here. It's not personal. It's across the board. People are being held accountable. So that hopefully, I mean, that would make anyone come to work. I don't want to hear that. You know? I, I used to go to the hospital late every day. I did. I admit it. It doesn't make me a bad person. It doesn't make anybody else a bad person. It means I'm it sure makes it harder that. for the next person. It does. It's not fair, and it's not fair to the patient or to the resident. Right. And so I make sure to pass out the numbers. So okay. we've got to raise our people up, hold them accountable, and make yeah. sure they come. And if they if they leave and you're hanging, don't be afraid to say, look, <laughs> you know when you're not here, I mean, don't start a fight, but you can't say that. You're pretty, you're pretty strong. I don't want to see you fighting in the parking lot, but is that my <laughs> But you can at least say, look, it, it makes it hard for you to time. They, they, they do know it, but you know what? When somebody confronts you on something, sometimes it's like, what you know? what they tell you? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't do a whole lot here to confront them. I know one employee complained about the first and the second feeds that we shouldn't always be one person first feed always in one second, and that's changed. So some days I'm first feed, some days I'm second. So that's fair. But um, I run across this problem, and it's repeatedly the same person comes in, sets down, and doesn't have to pass any trays and starts feeding, and sits almost the entire time till we're done picking the trays up. That needs to be made more clear that the work needs to be split, that you're not to sit down to feed till all the trays are passed so they're warm. The state came and we'd get busted if that person did that. Sure. Do you, you all say anything to that person or y'all just continue to do the work? We just keep quiet. We just keep on the main line stuff. She knows what I'm she talking knows. about. Yeah. Well, she then knows bring it to your supervisor's attention though because that's part yeah. of the reason they're there. Yeah. If it's still happening and you don't feel comfortable saying anything, you need to speak to your supervisor because that's why they're there. It is. And if you don't, you know, the evenings that has a new supervisor, Katie, have you seen her? Yeah. Um, and I've hired someone else too. So we have some new supervision. So in the meantime, bring it to your unit manager, the ADU units, or myself, if you want to do that. If any of us will pursue it. I don't know that it's 100% fixed rate right now, but it's not that it's not being it's not as bad. And I think as we continue to get more people, because I can tell you, I've hired three or four second shift people, but they have to get through the orientation. So I know you all have the worst shift as far as that to me it goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have people. You just have to, you know, you gotta go through your orientation, you gotta do your drug screens, you gotta do. But is it three or four? It's like three or four um, second shift people. 
So they're coming. Just keep holding on. So when you serve a table, how do you? Let's just walk through the process so that I can say that I told you. So when you serve a table, how how do you serve the table? You take it off the tray, get off the tray, put it in front of them, open everything, set them up, take the tray back and put it on the cart. Or and then who do you cart. serve after that? The next person. The next person that's at the table. table. Yeah. And you, you serve it on the table. table. You don't need one person right. eating. And, and, and they're doing better about that. They're doing better about that. If you put a tray in front of a fee, as somebody who has to be fed, what do you have to do? You have to feed them. You can't let them sit there and look at their tray. They have to be fed as soon as their food is delivered. Okay. Now, if you've got somebody that has to be fed at a table of alert people, it's probably a, a recipe for failure, to be honest. Yes, Dennis? See, it doesn't set up from the dining, from the kitchen. They should set, set that up in the, uh, in the kitchen. You should put the first one that is uh, uh, it's not a pea, and then the last one will be the pea. So when you put the uh, trays on the on their front, that be they were sitting down there. It would be a great, of, great opportunity know. for you to talk to Gail and our guys come and come out. Yeah, they they should set it up that way. You feed themselves in the second cart. You know, it's easier that way. And that way, if they bring one cart first and then the second. See, I, I did that. I did that in South. And I more set up my first one, and I just pushed the whole thing out of the way. I'm. Understanding what you're saying, and if the result is that nobody sits there while people are eating, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the kids are supposed to set that up. The kids are and then the feet. The nurses have been in the dining room to help and to oversee and to direct, but you know what the reality is? I've been a DON 29 years. I've been a nurse longer than that. And where I see really successful dining rooms, really resident-centered dining rooms, or where the nursing assistants step it up and do it. You guys know your residents. You know how to do this. You know what you're doing. But nursing assistants step it up and hold each other accountable. If you see somebody's not coming down there, you say something to them. How, how are we supposed to feed if no one comes down? You know, you say something. Again, no fighting in the parking lot, but you can say stuff. And then if you don't get a good response, then you go to a charge nurse or supervisor. Mm -hmm. The way it's supposed to go is you can go to your charge nurse and that person will deal with it. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes they will, mm -hmm. sometimes they won't. But that should be your your mm -hmm. your go-to. I had a nurse in there who was going to a dining room better than that would be there. They're like, oh, well, where's Santa? They need to be up in here. That's true. Mm -hmm. Just until it gets going. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about that in the open. Nurses should be thinking to be run smoothly because people are you know, lackadaisical. They're going to do what they're getting away with doing. But if there's somebody in there that's a part of being like, okay, we need to do this. Where so and so they need to be in here. Someone that's not maybe another aide, then maybe they'll realize that and this how these people. Think how important the meal is to your residents. Who, what's the most important thing in this house? This nursing home? Residents. way too long. You think the meals I know I'm new, but the meal times take way too long. The people are taking way too long to be fed. And it's, I, I'm new and I'm noticing it. I'm like, wow, this is, I mean, that's taking away time that I could be changing people, laying people down, doing another shower. I mean, meal times are like over two hours. Each meal time. That's four hours out of my day, out of the 12 hour day. If I'm an eight hour day, that's half my day. It is. It is. We've got that's half the time we've got to away from our time. Time. up. We do. First floor has its issues, second floor has bigger ones. Um, and we're depending on these two people to really support us, help us figure this out, set things up, do what they need to do. Um, and you're right. We've got to do better. But it's this team that can make it happen. And if somebody is not going to the dining room, I mentioned this in the other, in the other one. If you are assigned to go to the dining room, I heard somebody say, "Well, if I've got somebody who's soiled, I'm, which is most important, I'm like, you're not going to always have somebody who's soiled. Of course, if they're soiled, you're going to clean them up. Of course, Ray Charles sees that. But you, but you have to. You don't need somebody during meal times. That's well, what I was always taught. During meal times, it's special control. You don't change people during meal times. If you haven't left. The hall, and but you don't want somebody to the dining room either. Right, right. You have to do what you have to do. But then, don't take that as an excuse not to go to the dining room. 
Right. right. So that's another thing. So do what you have to do, and then go to the dining room and make sure people get fed. It's critical. Mm -hmm. You don't use. Uh, we're trying to get away from clothing protectors because they look like bibs. We're supposed to have patient-centered care here. This is people's homes. They need to have napkins. So we've got great big napkins that we've ordered. You'll see them come out in the theater near you. And make sure you put these napkins on them and not and understand that this is something again Sam has asked us to do. Are they clip on napkins or tie them on? But do you know what? Just the shirt. Yeah. People are like to have special festival. I have these short one. No idea. No, <laughs> oh, I have to always look. They want to be colored. Yeah. And I ask you, well, do you want a lot or do you want a round neck? I mean, you ask the piece of yours. Most people want to hear. I know. Anything you want to hear. The reason I'm asking is we do that. Or one, I'm sure it's more than one. President, that everything goes to their mouth. They will take that napkin and they'll stick it in their mouth and use the paper. Well, these aren't people. These are cloth. We are providing the cloth. They're big cloth napkins. Little napkins. So, let's see. What else? What else with the dining? How about having music in the dining room? Can we do that? But not so loud. Yeah. Not too loud. Yeah. Sometimes on the side of you try to hold the wash of music and and just the background music. 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 How do you do thick and um, Don was laughing at me today because I was saying, you know, I'm one of those people who choose my cabbage two, three, four times. I was talking about this thick and liquid issue. How do you guys, th how do you thicken your liquid? Well, if you don't know how, you can look on the can because it'll show you. Where's that? Is that what you guys do? You look on the can and thicken the liquid? I look at the consistency. You know your patients. Well, um, that's right. You, look, you, you know your patients, you know what the consistency is, you follow the recipe. Always follow the recipe. If the state order health lady came in, or man, came in and said, how do you know? I would not say to them, eh, I just poured in there and stirred up. No. <laughs> you got to follow the recipe. And it's on the can, and I saw it upstairs, it's on the wall. That's what you do. I kind of think we're going to move to maybe the thick packets, but you just squirt the whole packet in. I think that would make more yeah, sense. They have this new squirt stuff that you squirt in your liquids, and then all you have to do is like say nectar thick and it's three squirts. Oh, we had that for a while. We tried it once before. Here's my name. And the resident didn't like the taste of that stuff. But in the meantime, make sure you're watching. What the consistency. Have you ever made it just the right consistency and then set it down and went back to it and it's like it's like it's like it's like yeah. 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 So that's why, you know, I'm kind of opposed to the powder. But we that's what we got right now, so that's what we'll do. Just be very, very careful of it. Um, how about the get up list on my shift? How's that working? Well, I hear a lot of people on MDU complaining about there's a lot of get ups on MDU. That yeah. is? They? they say it's not fair. It's not the yeah, MDU. I hear I I hear through the people say that they're not getting many people up there getting the second people sitting first. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I am not a HR person. I don't know if you're to get up. like six feet or something. Well, the, uh, but see, I came back after the fact when we changed the over. I came back yesterday. So I don't know who they supposed to get So, what do you mean you don't know who the right? don't know. You don't have a list. Because there is a list that's made well, up. I just okay. came back yesterday. Okay. So, I know everything well, switched over on the seven. I wasn't here. Well, you don't work third shift either, so I know they posted on the third shift. Because yeah. that's the short third shift get up list. Right. So third shift are the people that needed to get me up between six and seven. And it's usually those people who like to get up, like when you work days, mm -hmm. the people who like to get up first between six and seven, yeah. that's who third's supposed to be getting well, up. I'm saying because they told me the two that's supposed to be like in the group that I did, one would be Helen, which she had not been there. She just got back yesterday. Right. Well, they were going off of, they did, 
that's a special situation. They didn't know Helen was going to be in the shape that she is in. Ordinarily, she was oh, And I got everybody up on my end. Well, you did because yeah. what day did you work? I don't know. It was like a Monday or Tuesday. Right, but this just rolled out. This just, out. Just, this just, just rolled out Sunday. Because the new shifts just oh, changed. No, I started Sunday. with Teresa and I got everybody up, even Tilly. Okay, maybe you did, but I'm saying oh, what we're talking about is the rollout that just happened this Sunday in the past. With this nurse aide shift changing, that's what she's talking about. There's a new get up list based off of that because now night has to get up some people who are like first feeds because now day shift comes in at seven as opposed to six. So that's what the get up list are talking about. So. Yeah, two weeks ago, you probably got everybody out of your group up because we were at six. We were, we were working that six to two. Now you're working seven to three fifteen. So might should. I'm saying like okay, mm -hmm. say the ratio is there's three aides down on the first floor. How many people are third shift getting up? Like a they have a list. Yeah. I don't remember how many it is, okay. but they have a list okay. from MDU to, to the end of the hall who, who gets up. Okay. So if you are third, you're not going to be. If you are third, third though, let you know. Let you know make my own plan. If you were third, they would say, okay, this is our list of people that we have to get up. Right. Whoever fell in your group, that would be who you would get up. Okay. Yeah. So if you ever were thirds, they'll show it to you that but little still a night shift when you come. They can tell you. Right. And you got those 15 minutes. So you say, hey, my get-ups were such and such, and I got them up. So you go I'm going to go check those rooms and make sure they're all the beds made. And with any transition, transition everybody when I come in the home. Well, when you just you just said it, you just came in yesterday. Okay, well, yesterday. first shift doesn't have a meeting yesterday. Right, so nobody. Nobody else. Right. Today, I still like. To what group did you work today? Mm -hmm. Good business. 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 Good that Good business. that business. Good business. Good business. Good business. Good business. Good business. Good business. Still, I'm like, I'm going, okay, if we're doing like walkthroughs, where are people at? Let's go through walk walkthroughs when I walk through the door. I so said, you're saying, you're, I'm saying, so what you're, you're saying is your person was gone, not necessarily right. who the get ups were, but what you right. want to know, what you're really trying to tell us, right. roundabout way, is that you need to walk through somebody right. over here. Well, then tell us that. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll look and see who that was okay. and find out why they weren't, why they left right there. Yeah. Because they're supposed to stay here until, just like when you get off, some, right. you want your person to be here at three so that you can leave, do your round and leave. I get you. Yes. So we'll just have to find out who that was. Okay. okay, just a couple more things. Um, sign off. When you go off the floor for lunch, sign out. And you should go off the floor for lunch. Just to get a break. It's You have to take a lunch. It's a, um, that work. What is that? Wage an hour. Wage an hour rule. That if you're here more than so many hours, you're going to have to go So sign off and leave or sign back along when you get back. The lunches need to be staggered. No one knows goes to lunch when it's meal time. I know second floor, there's a big part of the day that's meal time. But that's just how it is. You can't go to lunch during the meal time. Nurses or aides. Um, and if you smoke, and I don't have anything against smokers, two of my four sons smoke, God forbid, but they do. So I'm not saying you're bad people. I'm saying when you smoke, go out on your break and don't take extra time. Because if you don't smoke, you get your nose out of joint because your people are off smoking, right? So just take your time that you're allowed, go out and smoke, and then come back within that 10 minutes. James, what do you got for that group? Just uh, with the skin, just don't assume that an area is being taken care of because uh, a lot of times it gets passed on, passed on, and then all of a sudden I find out it's been two weeks since they had an area. Uh, definitely whenever you do your skin checks, whenever you do your showers, let the nurse know about it. Hopefully they come in there, they do that first skin check with you at the beginning part of the week, and of course you guys are responsible for doing another skin check for your second shower. Uh, falls. You already know about the stickers on the doors. Just pay attention to those. Those are falls within 90 days. And some of them don't leave there because they constantly keep going. Just like my one gentleman upstairs. Six in, in 90 days. And it seems like it's six all the time. Uh, you know who the fault people are. You know who you need to keep an eye on. Uh, a lot of times it's always toilet and issues. Especially that one person upstairs. So definitely make sure you toilet them. 
they can't toilet, maybe bedpan, urinal, anything like that. Uh, and any kind of ideas that you have that, that go ahead and keep us from having a fall person, let me know. Because, uh, like I said, most of the time you guard the ones taking care of them. So, I like the input from you guys. You know what the resident likes, dislikes, and what will actually help them. So. Well, what do we do when we're giving a resident a shower? The nurse knows we're giving a resident a shower, and she still doesn't come in there and, and do their skin assessment. Are you signing it off and all that? You're putting your name on there? Yeah. It's going to go fall on the nurse, though, for not coming out there and getting it done. Because you, you I, did it, you I notified barely it. ever see a nurse come in and say, well, here, let me look at this person. Right. And if that's the case, you're signing off that you're doing it. You know what? That nurse knows she needs to sign off as well. So it's always going to go ahead and fall underneath the nurse if it's not getting done. You know, you're going to go ahead and let her know. Say, hey, I'm in the shower right now. If you want to, you can come in right now. And go some of them just sign that sheet. Yeah, they just sign that sheet. And, they don't come and if that's an issue, I definitely want to know because I need to address this. Because if now, is that the part? Are they still doing the nurses? Are doing but they the still have to sign. But they still have to sign off even on their second one. Right. But uh, I'm saying, we, how do we know that they're not falling into their second shower of the week? Is this the first day? It should be dated. Yeah, you got, well, you got Monday through Wednesday, right. and then you got after that, you got Thursday on. That's the second part of their shower. Yeah. So the second part is just a nurse day. Right. The first part is definitely the with the nurses. Do your part, and if the nurses aren't doing it, they'll be yeah, they'll get they'll caught. From so they'll get caught. Because I got some people that take the shower three times a week. Yeah, Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday, too. Mm -hmm. And if you do have that person that just signs it, just take a look at it, pass it on to me. Pass it on to your unit suit, unit so manager. So I'll say, you know, just let you know, I'm in there doing the skin, I'm doing a shower, and I tell the nurse to come in here, she just signs, she doesn't take a look at it. So that's something that we can go ahead and address with the nurse, say, hey, this is what's coming back to me. When I'm giving a shower, though, after I'm done, the nurse will say, well, how did his bottom look, or how did his... There yeah. <laughs> there, that first shower, they're supposed to come in there and do a head and tail on them. So once, if that does happen, let me know so I can go ahead and address with that nurse. Say, this is what I'm hearing, and I, you're, you're just asking, you're not seeing. You know, when you chart, <clears throat> well, there's a place to make notes. Now I was trying to see why they so to speak, or nurse notified, or then offer skin check. Oh, the nurse notified makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, that's what you're supposed to do, and that's where the onus stops. The nurse has to be responsible for others. And we know, and even in this room, there are some stronger than others. There are, there just are. But, I mean, just do what you're supposed to do. And, and, and it's no it. different with your charting as well. You might be doing your charting. That nurse ultimately responsible for checking behind you and make sure that you're actually completed with the charting. And they're supposed to get a hold of you before you guys leave to make sure, is this finished? Why is there excess here? That, and that's the expectation that is not happening, but it will. So don't, you know, don't well, feel like my it's... Shift, I always give the, the nurse the printout. The printout, yeah, that's good. Uh, good for that you. That's good. And they said, well, why are you giving it to me for? I'm just going to throw it away. Well, say, do what you want. I'm giving it to you to show you I've done all my stuff. They say, you're the only one that does this at the end of the shift. That's all right. I don't care. Right. That, good habit. Don't that, quit. That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. The other thing is the BM. You, you made me think. Remember how how long does how long does a resident go before they're treated if they haven't had a BM? Three days. Three days. So daily, we haven't really started this yet, but daily we're going to be looking at anybody that's gone three days without a BM. That then gets put back on the desk or on the cart of the charge nurse, who then has to determine what they will do about that. What do you think they might do about that? They may ask, did anybody see a BM? I just didn't chart it. Or they may just give them whatever they got. So you've got to make sure that you're documenting BMs. Because haven't you gone home before and thought, oh, I forgot to do that. But And sometimes maybe it's BM you think so. It is important because you don't want them running off when they have actually had a BM. So you may even want to call back in and say, hey, this person had a BM, I forgot to charge her, but tomorrow or whatever, can we do it or whatever. But it's real important. These things are so important. And sometimes we don't take those, we don't think what we do is that important. It is. But on the other hand, if, 
if they really are constipated or if they have that awful word impaction, we need to know and we need to get real aggressive about it because that can be life threatening. So that makes you sick. What you got, Doc? That's it. You get all the points that I have. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's a good thing. Thank you for being here. I have a question. Yes. Um, there's this resident on um, South. She refuses her showers. She doesn't want bed bags. What are we supposed to do with that risk? And what does your nurse tell you about it? Um, at times, the nurse will go in there, she will refuse. <coughs> so does the manager get involved? I told her once to. OK. Then let us know who it is, and then we'll try to problem solve. Sometimes, I hate to say it, sometimes you can kind Yeah, of I mean, like, when you're changing yeah, her, at times, she will, like, push you away, you know, she is so mean in such a way that at times you will go in there, she will just yell at you like, she will turn her line, you go in there and say, what do you need? She just, she, in there she will be like, I did not put on the light. I said, but your light is on, that's why I came in. No, I did not put on the light. Just leave me alone. So do you guys know who she's talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't. So we mean, just need to find out who it is and see what we can do about it. Maybe family. You probably have tried everything, but Oh, yeah, <laughs> she does do that. If, if you can go on the computer, you'll see that because I gave her a shower once, you know, it's about like three weeks. She won't take the shower at all. At all. And we need to get that is a challenge. We need to. Yeah. We need to figure out a she way around. Not. She's also on the daily things. So. Yeah, she's a daily thing. in her room today. Yeah. We know you're talking about Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 